Hello world, this is me, life should be, mm -mm, yeah, fun for everyone. <laughs> okay, so basically long story short, I was editing this video when my audio and camera decided to play up again, so I'm refilming this episode once again, um, which is why it's taken a long time to get up. So I thank you for your patience and we won't hesitate you anymore and jump straight into it. Looks like you've got a friend for life. Must keep you busy. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much live at the barn. Well, I wouldn't expect anything less from my assistant. What? Your work study's been approved. For the next two weeks, you're a vet in training. Can I just clarify something? I've read the books. I've looked on the Saddle Club, Saddle Club website. Carol is meant to be around the age of 11 to 12. Now, I don't know what things are like all around the world. So, obviously, it's going to be different per country. But... In what schooling allows someone in primary school to do a work study? Like, I was only doing work studies when I was in year 12 at school. I wasn't doing it before then, especially not while I was in primary school. So, if anyone was around the world, please tell me if your schooling allows you, or you were in primary school, middle school, whatever you are, 11 to 12, what schooling lets you be a work study, especially a vet in training. Not even a vet nurse, she's a vet in training. Like, don't think you should start with like something small like dog grooming or dog assist, like dog grooming assistance and then work her way up, especially being her age. Can someone please let me know if that's just Australia or all over the world? I'd love to know. Keep going, Sam's good. You can really tell how cold it was, and I feel so sorry for them because I know, like, I mean, it got cold where I wrote. I was always like wearing 50,000 layers, and for them being actors, they can only wear what their character would wear, and you can totally tell how cold they are, and I feel so bad for them because I would be absolutely freezing, and that's why I always wore like a jumper, a jacket, and then a, uh, one of those raincoats on top. I was. I tried to be like a heater when I wrote, so I totally know how they're feeling right now. But horse riding does warm you up as well, so. I guess it does cancel it out depending on how much you ride. That does warm you up and keeps you warm. Chrissy, like, you ain't anything special. <laughs> right. I want you to climb in there with Norton and hold him still for me. Norton doesn't look like he wants any company. Dr. <coughs> Judy Barker. <coughs> Okay, so we don't know what sickness this pig has, but clearly if he's that sick that the vet's coming out, he should be in isolation. He shouldn't be surrounded by other pigs. Like, we don't know what kind of sickness he's having. He just might have a graze on his, in his hoof or whatnot. But I just think if a vet's coming out, and clearly vets are on tight schedules, I have other people, other patients to see, um, you want to isolate the pig um, and just make sure the visit is, quick, is as quick as possible. Um, so he wouldn't be in a large paddock surrounded by other pigs. He would be isolated in his own little pen. Believe me, that isn't the worst thing a dog's gonna do. Like, it's not the worst thing. So, if she wants to be a vet, she needs to know there's a lot more worse things a dog's gonna do to you than throw up over your boots. She's like, just be grateful it was your boots. What's he doing? I hope you don't mind sharing your lesson. Sam was sick last week, and this is the only time we could schedule a makeup. So just for those who go to riding schools and um, riding academies, whatever they call it in your country, this situation would never happen. You would have been advised at least 24 hours in advance if you would be sharing a lesson, quite frankly, because, you know, you, you may not want a jumping lesson. You may want a dressage lesson. That will depend on what you want at the time. Um, and thankfully, they have to advise you legally if you will be sharing a lesson, you wouldn't rock up on the day to find out you're sharing a lesson with someone who was sick the other week. Um, because this is no time for a makeup lesson. There'll be other times during the week, or you can have a double up next week. Uh, if you pay for a private lesson, you will be getting a private lesson unless advised at least 24 hours in advance. Are you sure? 
Your mum was one of the best vets I've ever seen. It's in your blood. Okay, so one thing I do know about vets is yes, they do have an on-call mobile, but they also have a secretary who'd be taking a lot of their calls, and she seems to be taking every single one of them. I guess that's just so we can continue on with the scene and get her out of the way. But yeah, in reality, they have a secretary who would organise that, page them through what they need, their next clientele is, if it's urgent, um, and all that sort of stuff. So she shouldn't really be answering a lot of her phone calls unless they're absolutely urgent, which they probably are. But just a little heads up for that. Major news, there's a jump off at Pine Hollow. Yeah, and Sam's challenged Veronica. It's amazing how quickly the story changes, like word of mouth and Chinese whispers. Sam didn't challenge Veronica, Veronica challenged Sam. Like, it's just amazing just how quickly the stories change based on who spreads the story around. Yeah. It's only your first day. Yeah, you can't expect to be a pro right away. And that goes the same for any job, like when you start a job, no matter if you've been there for 15 years and you're just changing to a different department, you are going to make mistakes, you are going to fail, there are things you're not going to know, there are things that you're going to find hard and tricky and things that are going to come naturally to you. No matter what job you're in, there are going to be hurdles to jump, no matter what, how, no matter how experienced you are in your career. So, Dr. Judy, she's been a vet we can assume for like, you know, 30 years and there's something that she's going to come across and be like, you know what, I can't handle that. I'll call a more experienced or a specialist vet to come through. There are some things that we're not going to know everything and we're not going to go to our graves knowing everything and that's really important to know that. We're not going to be pros at our jobs no matter how experienced we are. There are things that we're going to fail at, things we're not going to know and hurdles that are going to cross and we just have to deal with it because that's just life. Dr. Judy! Where have you been, Carol? You're late. I know, but I have to talk to you. I've given it a lot of thought. We'll have to talk later. Right now, I need you to come on a call with me. Or you can talk in the car when you have plenty of time and you're completely alone. Come on, you'll do better next time. No, I won't. I can't do this anymore. I quit. What are you talking about? You're a fine assistant. No, I'm not. Every time I get near an animal, I get kicked or trampled or scratched. I make a lousy vet. I'll never be like you or... You can never compare yourself to other people, especially not family members. I find that really difficult. Especially going to school with my sisters, I went to the same school, some teachers would be like, your sisters could do that, why couldn't you? And it's like, I'm not my sisters, that's why. Um, so yeah, it's hard not to compare yourself to family members, but we're never going to be like them or our role models. Everyone has their own different... Uh, personality traits everyone's got their own style and their way of doing things so we're never going to be like someone never try to be like them strive to be better than them so yeah this is just not going to work i'm sorry dr judy Hello. you're really going to run all the way home hey, that's my double oxa it's salt. Come on, let's go to the mall. I can't. I've got the jump off, remember? Okay, so I'm going to assume this is school holidays, and I'm sorry for Nick picking, but they always seem to be at Pine Hollow at every time of the day, so it's just always seem to be school holidays for me. Because it's Thursday, we know that. They have to jump off at 6 o'clock, which means they have to be there for at least 5 to catch their horse, brush them, tack them up, warm them up, and be on the jumping course. And that does take about an hour. Um, so I can only assume that this is school holidays, but it just always seems to be school holidays or a student free day in my mind. Because they're always there every day of the week at all times. Um, Mark's being used in a lesson. Do you want to help me with Delilah? Give me back to say you could write it. Since when do I have to ask? Max lets me write her all the time. I think given that situation, if Max does give permission for other riders to ride his horse, he should have told them from the start, look, Delilah's not well. For that reason, can you please not ride her until further notice instead of like, leaving in the dark? Because if Brad wasn't there, Christy would have ridden Delilah without knowledge. So he really should have been more knowledgeable to the kids that Delilah was not to be ridden for, until further notice. How's she doing? Is she winning? You better hope she knocks the rail down. I just want to know, because we did see the crowd when Sam was riding and those girls were not there. 
So how did they know Sam's time? I mean, the only thing I can think of is if they had like a five minute break after Sam rode to have like dinner or something, but we saw the, the crowd before. The girls were not there. So how did they know Sam's time and how well he performed? Just a little question for myself. Will break his heart never to be able to run free again? What kind of vet are you? You're supposed to save animals, not kill them. That is not a vet's job. A vet's job, I'm pretty sure, as we all know, is not to save an animal. It is to put them out of pain. Sometimes that can be done with medication. Sometimes that can be done with operations. Sometimes the best situation is to put them down. And I know that from a personal experience because I had to put down my horse, as we all know, based on this channel. I loved it with all my dear heart and soul, but when I was told by that that it was the worst case of arthritis he'd ever seen in his entire career of being a vet, I knew it was the best decision to put her down. done with episode 10 I think it is. Uh, fun fact that Cobalt and Cobalt Stunt Horse do make an appearance again. I think Cobalt plays Belle and then Cobalt Stunt Horse plays Storm. So yeah they do come back halfway through the series. If you did like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also please do subscribe for more and I will see you next time in the next episode. Bye guys!